I agree with you. I, I think that does waste time. Everything that you should always push should always push back to some sort of form of social. You'll find they originated at uh, some other source. And so when they show up on your site. Welcome, guys, to Open Mic on Sunday with um, Chris Murphy and Charles Buell. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to be talking about social. And Chris wanted to open up the show. So take it away, Chris. All right. Good morning, everyone, or afternoon. I guess uh, we got some lunch. Uh, Charles is going to come at you with ha- how he makes his blog successful. Uh, Gary's going to come in and he's going to talk to you about keywords or being able not even talking about yourself on your social media page. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how I do my videos. So uh, let's. Uh, I think uh, I like Gary's topic a little bit more. How about he thinks people are being antisocial on their social media page. <laughs> well, what do you think about that, Gary? I, I think it could be for you would be pretty easy to, to be antisocial on your social media page. I think it, it, that a lot of um, that, that I follow a lot of guys. I follow a lot of companies, and the probably the most um, the most often thing that I find it, on Facebook, especially is home inspectors who either hire out someone to to speak for them in in the social setting or um, they post, um, constantly post on their Facebook page and draw traffic not to their blog or to their website, but to other content. Uh, In other words, they, they push to fancy lists or how to's and things of that nature. And I'm wondering just how uh, helpful and uh, is that wasting time? How, what, what do you guys think? Um, I agree with you. Together? I agree with you. I, I think that does waste time. Everything that you should always push should always push back to some sort of form, social media or form of yourself. So it should always go back to your blog on your webpage or should go to your YouTube channel, or should go to your Facebook personal page or your business page. It should be a constant circle surrounded by yourself. So um, I actually made the same mistake whenever I first started and I hired someone out because I was like, man, I'm too busy. I got two inspections a day. I have to post on Facebook. I have to post on, you know, Instagram, whatever. Right. And I did make that mistake. And so I hired someone out and I'd get home and there'd be like 12 ways to make your house look pretty. And I'd be like, that has nothing to do with home inspections, you know, right. like, so I was like, okay, well, I'll give her a shot. And three months later, and it's just full of junk, like happy new year, St. Patrick's day, like all this mm-hmm. stuff, like going all the way down the list. And I was like, man, this is, I just don't think it's worth my money, you know? And that's like 300 bucks a month for someone that's cheap, not even for someone that's good. So I do, I do believe that you need uh, something that surrounds yourself. It should always go back to you uh, mm-hmm. about it. And about home inspections, you know, that's what we're there for. We're there to sell home inspections. So it should be you in front of the camera or just pictures of graphic things or how things are, should be done correctly. You know, it should be always about you and how you're the best home inspector. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate here a little oh, bit. Man. <laughs> I, have to, I have to. <laughs> uh, some, one of us has to, don't we? Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's. let's uh, my my feeling is that any content you have on your website should be primarily your own content. So, if, if for example, you see a lot of websites that if you take any snippet of uh, the text or the the articles they may have posted on it. Uh, you'll find they originated at uh, some other source. And so when they show up on your site, you're creating S- improving their SEO, not yours at all. Uh, so I think uh, original content of your own on your own site that changes routinely. And honestly, I, I blog about all kinds of stuff, not just home inspector stuff, because I want my client to get a sense of who I am. And I want them to see me as a, a, a real human being that they could sit down and have a cup of coffee with or whatever. So that by the time they've read a few of my blog posts, they know who I vote for and everything else. <laughs> not, right. not serious. I'm being facetious, obviously, but... Uh, you you can uh, 
win people over by appearing by developing that human side of your blog so that uh yeah the inspection stuff's really important but blog about uh when you're blogging about inspection stuff blog about inspection stuff that's pertinent to your particular area so that when people have uh, interests and they're googling those things you're the one that site that comes up because you mm. Uh, you rank and uh, right. I mean I don't uh, it's hard for me to rank for Seattle Home Inspector for example we've got 450 guys here all trying to do the same thing so uh, but if you put in uh, Seattle Home Inspector uh, foundation cracks I'll come up <laughs> you know what I mean so you have to rely on the people are going to the smarter people are going to find you <laughs> so when you say when you put in um you're talking about search engines whether it be bing or whether it be a yahoo search engine or a google search engine yeah. and so you're you're specifically wanting to rank for a specific keyword but but it doesn't have to be uh I mean, like if I wanted to rank for Seattle Home Inspector, I, that's going to be a tough nut to crack. You just not, it's just, um, it's going to be almost a waste of time. Uh, uh, I, I have to disagree a little bit because I have, I'm Houston, Texas Home Inspector. I don't even know how many people are here. There's like three, two schools here. And I think there's probably a few thousand of them or maybe a thousand home inspectors just in Houston. And yeah. I'm, I'm probably the top five if you uh, research me in. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where do you think but, you get a lot of that traffic from, Chris? Oh, uh, man, everything. Yelp, Facebook, Google. I mean, like, I think because I don't just do one thing. I do. You can't just post on one area and expect to get work from it. You have to hit every source that's available to you. Meaning uh, the it, different social sites? Yeah, social sites, Facebook. Yeah, YouTube especially because that YouTube own, Google owns YouTube now. Um, you you do everything, anything that's free, you should own it, and your business name should be exactly. On it. But again, it's your content. It's not somebody else's content that you're be, that is creating that ranking right. for you. That, I that completely you agree. Right? Yeah. Do you keep a blog, Chris? Uh, that actually, well, I do have a blog, but I, I actually, it's just my YouTube videos. I do YouTube and I post it in my blog and we write a description about, we just kind of keep it simple. Yeah. As long as it's content that Google can search, Google can't right. search videos except for what you write about the video. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it still comes back down to writing communication yeah. something that google can actually read it can't read pixels uh in, in images uh the same. so let's talk about that for a second if um if chris is posting a video and google obviously can't read the video and and doesn't uh really gather a lot of the ranking signals from the video itself it's based on the the title mm -hmm. um the the social interaction is uh, largely based on the 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 uh, image so if it's something right. uh enticing that that, that that is something the the title is keyword focused and then there are uh there are there are opportunities to post uh tags hashtags sure. right. uh with with the video that will allow it to rank for a certain topic Mm -hmm. So, when, uh, Chris, when you, you're uh, producing a video about a roof, obviously you want to put uh, some tags in there about roofing. Correct, correct. Um, actually, I'm going to look at uh, Greg's post here. He actually just brought up, he said, uh, he says he posts himself on Facebook, but yet had gotten a job from it. I actually maintain probably about a job a week from Facebook. Um, and the and I've actually started gaining a little bit more traction ever since I started doing the videos. And how I actually get that is every time I meet a real estate agent and they give me their card, the first thing I do whenever I go home is I friend them on Facebook. That's very important because they're not going to remember who you are a few minutes ago. And so by then, if you look at my Facebook feed, I probably have like a thousand home inspectors or a thousand agents that are friends. And I actually probably only have 300 personal friends <laughs> that I like to keep track of. Right, and right. So, Every time I do a video, they're seeing that. 
and that's how I kind of keep track of the people mm -hmm. that I sell to to on Facebook. Well, you stay on their radar that way yeah. as well. You mm -hmm. want to post something every day. You, it's not one. It's not something. Even if it's dumb, I don't even care. You see a, a rusty nail. The thing is, is that Chris Murphy is out there. He's a home inspector, and he saw a rusty nail. So, like, so, <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. so you want to post something every day, and then that's how uh, you gain traction on social media. Well, there are some, there are some key, there are some uh, secrets that that I'd like to share with our followers. Uh, as it pertains to Facebook and their potential war with YouTube and the number of followers on and the number of views that both domains seem to be searching after. Um, there's been some study uh, that is pointing toward uh, Facebook penalizing you if you either post too much YouTube, if you, pull, if, you pu if you push too much content from YouTube into Facebook, uh, they will stop showing the video as a part of uh, and having it play inside Facebook. They'll, you, you'll have to leave. And when, you know, obviously you don't want to drive your traffic from your, your particular profile or, or your, uh, from your account inside Facebook. So be careful the content. Uh, number one and number two that the ratio so if you have the ability with a raw file to be able to load it load it in two places load it in Facebook and load it in in YouTube correct and um, I would post um, the the words the words kind of out that you should post something like 20 to 1 or maybe even 30 to 1 Facebook video versus YouTube if your primary audience is Facebook you, all of your video really needs to be native Facebook videos. And then you can throw a YouTube video in there occasionally. Otherwise, Facebook has the opportunity to penalize your, your data and not have it show on the wall at all. They will do it. And then you have to pay. Then you're going to have to pay to start showing up. So right. you're, you're correct about that. I don't know that I've ever done a native uh, Facebook video. What's that look like? Yeah, what? It's just, it's just a, all you're doing is he, what are you just saying is you use Facebook only you operate law raw video to Facebook, but try not try to keep the YouTube content out of it because Facebook will punish you and you won't show up on other people's feeds because you're throwing in Facebook. So you're talking about just shooting something with your phone and never go right to Facebook or, or anything. I mean, just your, the raw file. So the raw file that you upload to Facebook has to be the same raw file, but you can't share YouTube links onto Facebook because they'll stop you. They'll, they'll stop you from showing up on people's feeds. So you just do the same file, but upload it onto YouTube separately compared. Yeah, I don't think I've ever done anything, but load up, upload my videos to YouTube. I didn't even know you could uh, put yeah. a raw, raw file on Facebook. Yeah, yeah it's a war. Yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely a war. And, and I it's, got banned for a week. <laughs> We're doing that. Chris got banned uh, on Facebook. What, what happened with that? Oh, I, w I uploaded you, you know, I created a link to where a YouTube video played automatically on Facebook. So I was getting views on YouTube through Facebook. And then I shared it across like 30 groups. And then Facebook banned me for a week saying no. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so yeah. what, so how does, how is Google going to find a raw file video? information on facebook they probably wouldn't no they're not you're just going to generate you're just trying to generate which, business which is the reason that you'd want to that, that you'd want to post it in two places if you're looking for a uh, search to return your video and your and your primary i mean the, the primary search engine of choice today is still uh google search yeah and that's why you want to post your video to youtube uh in a native fashion and then turn around and post the same video, the same content to Facebook and have your Facebook traffic follow you with a Facebook native video. Have your, you're going to have a different set of followers on YouTube. So you're really going to have two sets of followers, which is one of the reasons that we sort of chose this topic today to talk about the broad reach that you, that, that you probably need to be aware of 
if mm-hmm. you're trying to uh, create your, your home inspection business and promote it on social media, you need to be touching a number of channels or a number right. of, of spaces. A little bit of everything because you're, I'm going to have my own personal following on Instagram. I'm going to have my own personal following on Facebook, my own personal following on YouTube, and they're all going to be different people. And that's, you're trying to reach out as much as possible. Um, actually, uh, Sean right here, he asked, how do I separate myself from my business on my social media page? Well, you can have uh, a business page on your social media and a Facebook page on your social media. But the thing is, is you don't. If you want to be really successful, you need to be the person in your business. What do you need? Um, you need to be your person in your business. So, hey, Chris, how, how are you seeing these people's questions? They're in the truck. Okay. Uh, I can. St- I have the Facebook page open. Oh, I got you. Yeah, Not yeah, right. and I haven't muted. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, you need to. You need. You are your business. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, she needs to move the truck. So, um, in in order to do that, the the different the different um. The different platforms um, rank different, and you're able to use the different platforms in different ways. Uh, Instagram is a is a is a fantastic uh, way. Facebook owns Instagram. Um, you you can very easily set up a post to, uh, and Instagram is mainly photos. Um, the key to Instagram is keywords. Chris, how many keywords are you allowed? Twenty. Thirty. 30 keywords. So if you're posting to Instagram, you could very easily set up to auto post the same content, the same Mm -hmm. photo with 30 keywords, as many as to uh, Facebook. And I wanted to show uh, my screen here and real quick and show you how that might um, take place. And let's see if we can do this. And you, and you want to, keep it short too, you know, uh, you kind of want to keep it short and sweet whenever you're doing your Facebook and Instagram posts, the people's audiences are very, very, uh, attention span is very short. <laughs> so let's look at this. This is, this is obviously, uh, you know, some eggs. And the reason I'm showing you this is that it originated in Instagram. Okay. I posted this post in Instagram and what I wanted to show you that the, the most fo- the focused part today is this first sentence. It includes a hashtag for exceptional. Today's inspection was absolutely exceptional. Thank you, Sharon. Sharon was my client, not my agent. Okay, so I'm, no, first of all, I'm thanking the client. Um, but what I wanted to show you if if you hover over the URL of the uh, post right here, I can get it to show. It's lighting up a bit. Well, it, it, the, 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 the Google is going to find, and any search engine is going to find these first few uh, text streams. So if you use a hashtag in your first few words of your post on Instagram, it will automatically show in Facebook this way. Google will find and place a ranking on this particular keyword. Mm -hmm. Exceptional in this case. So if I were to jump over to Facebook and do a search, do a keyword search, pound exceptional, as you can see, my post shows in a keyword search. There's the eggs. So um, when we're talking about uh, how to how to post to social and how to use the platform to its advantage, I jump over to Bing, do a search on pound exceptional in the search engine and it pulls up an Instagram. Okay, so if I click on this Instagram, I'm able to see the post. Right there. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm able to see the post show right there. Right there. Yeah. So not only is the uh, is the post showing up um, on the the return that I want them to show up, but it's also showing in a number of other search terms. So the, the, the main takeaway here is if you're posting to social, you want to do a little, little research on the platform you're, you're working on. But the main takeaway is that those first few bits of text string are very important and become the title of uh, the post and allow you to be able to use more effectively the search term. So if you're talking about uh, mold, then you obviously you want to use some search term in that first sentence that basically explains what your topic is about that you're trying to convey. All right, nice. So uh, um, I was thinking that maybe I could describe how I go about doing a video uh, to the audience because I know a lot of people are there's several different ways about going about uh, shooting video content. Uh, and that even kind of goes into Instagram and Facebook and what I found out that's most successful uh, whenever it comes to social platforms of how I've been actually been able to generate audience. And actually my inspection yesterday was like, I hired you because your YouTube videos or your Facebook videos, like it's working. <laughs> it takes, it takes three months or something about that, something like that for it to start working. So you actually got hired from, from some, some of your work on your videos. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was my second job uh, that it actually, someone was there and they're like, I hired you because my agent saw that your videos and they showed it to me and I liked you. And I, you know, I requested you to show up. Yeah. And that's a, that's a really important message to inter, interrupt here with it doesn't matter what the content of the video is about. It's about, it's them again, seeing you as a human being and that you're engaged and interested and serious. And uh, the content, some guys kind of rag on the video guys for, uh, well, they're not very professional and they stutter and they uh, don't right, have right, right, clothes. Right. And, right. and none of that matters. None of that. No, you're, I 100% agree with you. I 100% agree with you uh, whenever you're saying none of that matters is because it's about you and, and yeah. who you are. Uh, and so you could be a big biker dude, right? I say this, if you know me, I've said this before, sell yourself as a big biker dude that knows everything about home inspections or yeah. Yeah. you could be a 12 year old looking baby face, young kid <laughs> that knows everything about home inspections, get in front of a video camera and guess what, who they're going to hire. The You're going to have some folks calling you a whippersnapper is what you can have. <laughs> yeah. you, can, you can be a home inspector that, you know, that likes to make, um, you know, funny voices and look at problems. You know, they're going to hire you because of Could that. Be. Right. Be Dave. <laughs> yeah. Billy, Billy Buck and Dave. Yeah. You'll have, you'll get their attention. Yeah, you're going to, it's just a matter of getting their attention. Well, and especially if you can get them laughing. Right. Yeah. Get them laughing, get them engaged and about it. And so kind of what I found out that actually works and a lot of trial and error, you know, started out with wearing sunglasses and then, you know, started walking on roofs or talking about certain topics and uh, Facebook and Instagram, you want to stick to one minute, uh, about one minute maybe two minutes but two minutes might be too long and then on youtube you can keep it around seven you can go all the way up to seven to eight minutes if you want to so what i've done is if i create a seven or eight minute video i actually go back in my editing software and i i cut out one minute sections and then i'll divide it up and i'll tell a story over several posts over several days on facebook and instagram and then i'll do one post on youtube and i, I found that that works out pretty well for me so you so you're able to you you're able to get um, more bang for your buck. Um, you know when you're doing video too, it's important um, to to take little small snippets called B-roll, uh, little short uh, snippets of kind of a video that might be in the area, just you getting out of the truck, you right. uh, or panning across the front of the of the home and and plug those into either the, uh, the intro or the right. outro 
uh, of, of your of your video. We, we can help you. If you guys have some questions about video, Chris can help you. I can help you uh, put some, have, have some tips to. Right, to yeah. Develop. You want to divide up the story. You don't want to just be you talking the entire time. So I could be talking about gutters and I have pans of gutters going yeah. over the screen mm -hmm. while I'm talking. But yeah, completely most, agree with you on that. Most of the best videos that I see, the guy doing the video has some sort of hook. It's either what he's wearing or uh, sunglasses, like you say, or a <laughs> Gary, Gary, a hat that's been dragged down the street a few times behind his truck. You know, it, it, <laughs> you have to have something like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And the most important part that I've noticed about the videos that I create is uh, you want to tell a story. So it's not just jump in and start talking right away, because if you do that, they're automatically not going to want to talk to you. So it's like you start off with, I'm at a property of 1976 and then boom, anyone that in an old home or look at old homes, they're automatically going to be hooked. Right. And then you can kind of go on from there and then you have a start, a middle and an end, just like a book. That's all that you're trying to do. And it doesn't have to be much. Most of my videos, it only takes me about 12 minutes, 15 minutes to shoot the whole thing. Just kind of develop a little st storyline in your head and just do, shoot it start start to finish and at the end you always want to uh <laughs> always want to uh, call to action so it's like you know that's chris murphy with a action you have any home inspection questions please give me a call and please like and share the videos you know that's very important you want them to like and share and subscribe you know you want that last final hook right there at the end and, and i think i don't think that every single uh frame has to have uh, 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 audio in it or voice in it either. Yeah, right. I think you want to create a sense uh, for your client or for the viewer that this is a person that I'm going to be able to get a word in edgewise. I mean, you, <laughs> you see, you know, you see some home inspectors they just they just talk and talk and talk and talk and they. That, you know. That's part of the story. Of what Gary was saying was is like so. Whenever you first pull up, it's like, hey, it's Chris with the act. You know, today I got a 1962 house and I'm going to go to the roof you get a picture, you do shoot B-roll of me opening up my ladder and setting it up to go up to the roof. And I'm, you know, walking up to the roof and then I'm talking on the roof. So you want to be like, how did I get to that point? That's how, you, that's how you do it. So that if you, I've kind of gotten better, but you can see some of my most recent videos. It's like, I pushed my truck to start, you know, that's how I got there, you know, type. Thing. So, so we're talking about video and how to put it together. You're talking about um, having keywords, uh, preferably in the top part of the um, the post when you're when you're able to post content, text content like on a Facebook page or on a Twitter post and on an Instagram post. Is that first those first few text strings are very important. Um, it's also important to tag that tag your video with with something a meaningful heading or a meaningful title, and then have a, a, a photo that's going to entice someone to want to click on the video. Obviously, right, that too. That's the thumbnail is very important. Correct. Right. Right. So um, the other uh, the other obvious um, uh, part about uh, this whole concept is having your own website and have that website do some of the work for you. And that's where Charlie's website really does all of his work. He doesn't have a whole lot of, it, of other content in his website at all. If you go to his website, he, he has, I think, don't you have an about page? I do. Yeah. yeah has an about <laughs> page. Sort of, so as hidden as possible. That's know? right. And, but yeah. his entire, his entire website is his blog and all of the things that, that, that you're able yeah. to gather from from his posts. For me, all I care about on my website is that the phone number is prominent and the blog is prominent. Right, and Google, your name. Google, want, Google wants the blog and right. I want clients right. to be able to call me immediately, anywhere, anytime. <laughs> Absolutely, positively. So when, um, when we're talking about a blog, and you're saying, well, you know, it's writing is difficult for me. I don't really writing is difficult. For me? I'm, I'm saying you must have a hard time as a home inspector. Because yeah, you're yeah. Going to be writing writing is the most important day. thing we do. So when you say, well, I, you know, this writing stuff is, is just, it's just difficult for me. I don't buy it. You, you write every day. So we have, or you, we're talking to 4,200 plus members here today. 
they're all in this group and, and we have some fantastic content to draw from. There are tons of photos, lots of videos. We have tons of conversations for you to use as idea generators to work your blog, to post to, post to it, and to create other text information on your Facebook page. I want to I want to interject one quick thing here that could just go off on a whole different tangent on another Sunday. But uh, it, the reality is that we are creating an industry where actually home inspectors don't have to write. <laughs> no, you're right. Yeah, you know, because we have well-made comments. And software is being set up to be ridiculously too easy in that respect. And oh, you mean with canned canned language? Well, that and just uh, short short circuit sentences like uh, "water heater heater leaking fix." That, <laughs> really, uh, I see this stuff out there, uh, uh, and that's not how. Well, the thing is, is actually, I agree with the simplicity of comments, to be honest, because you got to realize, you got to realize who you're talking to as the reader, who's the reader of your comments. Are you talking, is it going to be engineers? Is it going to be computer software analytic people? You know, our job is performance inspectors. So you, whenever you're saying the comments too simple, well, the person that's reading it can only read simple verbiage. So it should be simple. In my opinion, it should be the water heater is leaking, needs to be replaced. You know that that's my opinion on it. Yeah, I I I, I think I tend to err on the side of my clients being pretty smart. They, they, if they if you're capable of owning a house, you gotta. Right. You know, you're not a you're not a renter. You know. Right. Uh, right. So. I, I like to err on the side that they that they actually can benefit from more descriptive information that will actually uh, well, well, ex explain I mean, why it's leaking and blah, blah, blah. Well, give, well give me an example I mean like so at the my comment would be is somewhere would be like it's corroded at the bottom on the back right side of the tank and it's leaking from this portion right and yeah. then you know on the above it will say uh, plumber required. Uh, water heater at the end of the life it'll have something like that mm. so you know and it's i i consider that a pretty simple uh topic uh comment and i like to try to keep it simple because if you go into verbiage it's going to get looked over and just i'll probably have three photos of top bottom middle and maybe four of where the problem is right well obviously it so, depends what it is and it's so, just fairly but, simple yeah it doesn't yeah, matter i mean so what would you how would you describe a topic like that well, let's say it's a little bit more serious uh, and say, uh, uh, well, I mean, I, I would get into the entire effects and pictures. I mean, it might be that the whole subfloor is rotting out in the crawl space, leaking into the crawl space. It's been doing it for years. And, uh, you know, this, this <laughs> so you set thing. it up, you, you set it up, you, you say where the, the safety parts are, where the safety concerns are, then you yeah you might touch on how to repair it potentially. Well, yeah, I mean, I, mine, I, I follow the, the three things that we kind of teach. Uh, it's kind of the acronym FIR, F-I-R, where it's you, what are your findings? What are the implications of those findings? And what's your recommendation and who you, which includes by who uh, you want oh repairs done. So oh, well, it's then. basically those components are, I want to see in most narratives, uh, uh, and I'll provide uh, ideas of the way things can be fixed, not specific guidelines, not saying this is how it must be done. I don't believe, I think that's, um, it's, that's actually dangerous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, but giving a couple options, because what happens is that it frames it in a, such a way that the client can see, oh, I, I see. It's it's not the end of the world. There's yeah. some options. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. It can be fixed. It's a, uh, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And, and I, so, you know, I, I understand that we, you give them options through the report, but so you actually write in options in your report whenever you I do. Yeah. Oh. But see, I say my model's different too. I don't mm -hmm. care how long the inspection takes. I don't care how long my reports are. are, you, are you and and that's, day? Yeah, yeah, and that's not a model most most people want to follow, I'm, and I know that. I I just uh, right. my idea is that at your liability goes down the fewer inspections you do. 
<laughs> so, so make the same amount of money you're going to make doing lots of inspections by doing fewer inspections, but providing more information. Yeah. Service. So, so if we push back on the video, um, here's another tip for you. Um, one of the things that face that uh, YouTube is finding very important is to group your videos in playlists. Correct. Mm -hmm. And you want to name the playlists for the uh, that would be friendly to your work. Um, whether that's rather than using the acronym HVAC, you may want to name it heating and cooling. Um, and then if you're producing videos in a group of them, you want to have, you know, four videos on HVAC. Don't put the HVAC obviously under, uh, electrical. Um, yeah. yeah. So, um, the, but, but YouTube now is, has a very, uh, keen focus on playlists and yeah. they allow the playlist to even have an image a, a basic image and um, its own search URL, which allows you then to take that playlist and send that playlist and share it. And yeah. so yeah. now you're, you're able to post maybe what Charles is, was depicting, how to do it. And maybe you wanna show a one minute and it takes three steps to show that. And mm. those three would be under heating and air and you're able to post that whole Con the whole tri uh, triple video imp for impact. Right. Yeah, yeah. In my videos, I, I think I need to update the um, my playlist titles a little bit better because in my playlist titles, it's just like quick home inspection finds. And then I have vlog and I think vlog is a little too vague. It should be like my home inspector story or something. You know, it needs to have my keyword mm -hmm. in there. So whenever they type it in, they can see it. Yeah, I, I set my, I need to work on mine as well. I kind of set mine up as just a place to put my videos and a way to get my videos on to right. a place where I could put them somewhere else. <laughs> you know, so it's a constant, uh, it's a constant massaging and a constant learning and the process of uh, social media marketing. Mm -hmm. um, the, the other, the other uh, point that I, that we talked about a little earlier in our uh, green room before we started here. <laughs> and came on live. Chris had mentioned something about um, when you are uh, setting up um, to do your inspection, um, you, 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 you may want to lay out a, a bunch of tools there that show that you know what you're talking about. <laughs> Chris, you want to take that and run with it? Oh, yeah. So I actually posted a picture in the group the other day. And, uh, you know, it was just it was just ironic. I had two, I had an inspector there. He was my trainee. And then I post, you know, I brought in some extra tools and we had them on the counter. I was like, man, that's a sweet photo. So I took a picture of it. Right. And I posted it in the group and man, it blew up. Right. It had like 40 comments about how I was doing it wrong. I had too many tools. I, uh, <laughs> I sued because I promising things that I can't find. Can't forget. Yeah. Right. yeah. So the purpose of that, photo you know and I started thinking about it a little bit more and it's it's I know how I was trained it's you don't get the dough unless you put on the show and a lot of older home inspectors they've heard this several times and then people are like what you don't you have to put on a show you already you're already hired well how are you going to get hired again or who are they going to tell their friends well then they're going to remember you seven years later right you know? yeah that's that's key, and I, I don't I don't do all this constant contact and reminder sure. emails and all that oh, stuff. Yeah. And people still call me from ten years ago and say, "Oh yeah, we're never never going to forget you." Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a it's part of the show, and so you probably have the show down. And and whenever I talk about the show, it's I mean it's everything. I mean, whenever to how you walk during yeah. your inspections, yeah. how you talk during your inspections, the way you dress. Like, so, you know, whenever I, the way I dress, I dress like a home inspector wherever I go, whenever I market, whenever I'm going to my inspections, <laughs> you know, Chris, I literally look like a home inspector. Chris, how do the, how do you get your pants to stay up with your underwear showing at the same time? What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where you're going with that. That's, well, you see, you've seen that look with all the teenagers, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The young, that's, uh, that's not me. 
this um, best in you. The way you describe your problems and, and what I wanted to talk about the way I walk, like whenever I walk, you can easily just kind of have a casual pace when you walk around a home inspection. That's super easy. But whenever I walk around my inspections, I walk with intent. So yeah. whenever I am beelining to the door, I walk like I'm about to own that door, if that makes sense. And I grab it, you know, that it's part of a show. And believe it or not, they're going to remember you because you opened and closed that door aggressively compared to being like, okay, the door works. You know, even though anyone can open and close a door, it's not about how easy the job is. It's a matter of, do you, are you showing the client? Do you, are you working for them? Yeah. Like are you alligator wrestling the banister when you go up the stairs? You know? Exactly. Uh, Same thing. Yeah. When I grab, when I'm walking up the stairs, I'm like, the stairs mine. Does it work? <laughs> you know? Yeah. You know? That's pretty much how I go with it. So it, it, believe it or not, and the way I wanted to describe it down to, I know I'm hogging the mic a little bit, sorry, because I have a lot of passion with about the show. It's about the customer service. And, and I understand that the people that don't put on the show, their services are exactly the same and they're doing the same exact job, probably just as well. But in the way I like to break it down to is something just as simple is, is uh, a DeWalt drill. Why do we buy a DeWalt drill? It looks nice. It feels nice. It probably operates just as good as the cheaper drill, but I buy it because it's a DeWalt drill. And it look, I know it, this looks like it has value to it. And that's how I treat my inspections, the same pro concept. But uh, so yeah. there, there are other social sites that are out there for you guys when you're, well, you know, the theme of the, the today is social media marketing. And we have uh, another group. I know a lot, I've mentioned it in several posts, but we do have an, a LinkedIn group and there is a, a fair <laughs> amount of juice you can get from LinkedIn. Uh, we've got a, a, a 5,100 member group over there on LinkedIn. Um, I post to LinkedIn um, quite often. Um, some of the content that I post on Instagram that works into my Facebook page also gets pushed over to LinkedIn occasionally and Google+. Plus. Uh, Google+, Plus is not quite so um, active, and, um, but the LinkedIn, um, it, it's a business atmosphere, and if you're serious about your business, that would be a great place. Don't forget about uh, the opportunities that, that are there on, on that platform. Have, have you noticed, Gary, that since they changed uh, their website that they don't seem to be as interested in groups anymore? I mean, I used to go on there and the right. groups were like crazy busy. Uh, and, right. and all of a sudden I noticed that I was posting there all the time. I'd share my blog post to LinkedIn and all of a sudden it was like jumping off a cliff as far as the number of hits in my analytics from LinkedIn. It is right. and I, 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 think a, I think a lot of that, Charlie, is uh, the focus on Facebook, really, uh, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and how Facebook has grown their, their groups uh, side of their domain. Yeah. Um, what, one thing, uh, someone just posted in the group, sorry, I'm pointing right in my camera. Uh, one person posted in the group says, maybe I need a, a new truck when it comes to doing the home inspection, you know, actually I grew my business out of just a, a crappy white truck. So I don't think the truck is 100% it. Yeah. It's, it's about where the vehicle is. I mean, that can be part of the show. I know a guy uh, named Blake Span. he has a, a, an inspector van or something and it looks really cool. Uh, it can be part of the show, but I think it's more of uh, the, the way you sell yourself. Well, uh, more than and it. Gary, you wear that hat on inspections, don't you? Do I wear this hat? Sure, yeah. every day. Yeah, yeah. so, uh, and that's, uh, your car is the same way. I have a Columbo approach to vehicles. I, I don't really care what my vehicle light is like. And yeah, because we kill our vehicles. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't personally yeah. buy this whole notion that you've got to drive a Mercedes and it's got to be waxed and polished every single inspection. I, I just, it's never, it's never proven necessary to me if I've lost clients because of that. Uh, right. Uh, I haven't gone hungry. I, I still have plenty of inspections. So that's, so that's the bottom line for me. Yeah. And, and, and what my uncle, he's or cousin. I think he's my cousin, actually. Yeah, he's my cousin. He owns Platinum Home Inspections up on the north side of Dallas. 
And uh, he actually was driving around in an Escalade, I think, at one point in time. And I think he got kicked back because they're like, oh, I see why my inspection is $650. <laughs> you know, they had to pay for the car piece. So I can agree with that. You don't, I don't think you need a fancy car. It's about how you sell yourself whenever you do your job. Yeah, if you need if you need that detail, you got bigger problems. <laughs> Peter, that's great that you get one uh, five to ten inspections a month out of Facebook. That's fantastic. Uh, man, I I need to actually go and figure out what he's doing because I'd love. <laughs> I'm only getting one, and I post all the time, so I'll probably I'll probably reach out to him. Well, you guys are ahead of me. I have no clue whether I ever get any from Facebook or not. <laughs> and the millennials are coming in and millennials still use facebook and i've noticed a lot of my younger crowds uh that are coming in they're using facebook youtube and instagram and you want to be kind of prominent on those because that's what i'm using yeah i just uh pulled up my own uh, channel and it's interesting to notice which videos i've posted get lots of traffic I, and my two most well, two of my more popular ones. One is changing the gasket on the overflow of a tub at 72,000 views. What? And, <laughs> and another, another one is uh, that I can put a light bulb in my mouth with 8,000 8, views. <laughs> yeah, I, I need, and I, I don't know. I'm just not doing, I'm doing more of kind of like, a, you know, like a lifestyle of home inspections. I do need to get a good few how-tos to drive more traffic to my business. Uh, or my YouTube page. Yeah, yeah, and all my electrical videos, they get uh, they get traffic too. But you know, I I don't have a whole lot with more than a thousand views. I mean, that's and I look so, at my my nephew who has a blog about his uh, hydroponic gardening, and he he gets literally hundreds of thousands of views on a hydroponic garden. Yeah, yeah I had one in my backyard. It didn't work out too well for me. But, uh, so here's a tip for you. Uh, um, <laughs> I have a, you know, I'm, I'm all about groups, obviously. I manage two uh, uh, real large groups, actually three, one on LinkedIn. But I also have a group for my clients, and it's called Help Fix My House. Mm. And when I do a home inspection, I invite them, and I only invite um, my past clients to a Private, uh, a private group. Well, that's, that's awesome. Idea. That's awesome. And that allows me full advantage to be able to have an audience and hardly anyone else posts in that group. So I, mm -hmm. I command the group, obviously. Um, and I'm able to drop interesting tidbits and reminders in there. Um, and it costs me zero money. It costs a little time to, to manage it. But um, if you're, it, you, you should, if you, do create a group for your page, connect the group to your business page. And you can do that with inside the software uh, in the settings section of the, of the Facebook uh, settings. I agree. That goes back to what we talked about at the beginning of the video. Everything should be surrounded. No matter what you do should always be pushed back to you in some sort of form of way. So don't just create a group just for kicks and gigs. It should be like create a group because of this reason to get pushed back to my web page or YouTube channel. So mm -hmm. I, yeah. yeah. And, and I, a lot of my clients call for an inspection because they subscribed to my blog from, for some reason years ago. <laughs> you know? So you, it's really important to, that, that your, your website is a huge part of your uh, exposure to the world. Your personification, so, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Man, that was pretty good, man. We hit all kinds of stuff today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, unless you guys have anything else to say, we're going to wrap this session. Um, and uh, it's been been enjoyable talking to you guys again and visiting with you. Um, keep in mind, uh, guys, that, that you can follow us on uh, SoundCloud. We also have uh, connected to iTunes. And so we're, we're there. Just look up today's Home Inspector on iTunes. We have a YouTube channel, so we'll clean this one up and, and rebroadcast it and set it to YouTube. Obviously, I want the bank, most bang for the buck, so we're going to natively stick it in <laughs> Facebook. 
<laughs> and so it'll be on our Facebook page for the group. Uh, so uh, we're going to wrap it up uh, for Chris and uh, Charles. And I'm Gary Smith, and thanks for watching. Thanks. Bye. Bye.